The narrative of the Manosphere disregards the problems women have and presents the world of oppression as if it has no history or complexity. It presents it as men have it worse than women and never provides any solutions or insight into the roots of the problems. With the Manosphere, everything leads back to the woman. They talk about women raising children and being the first teacher. But I mean, that's just not a sound argument. Um, first off, the woman was raised by someone too. If that's such a strong influence, then you can't fault the mother either. You would just need to go back and it ends up just being the nature of things. The argument is men shouldn't be held accountable for the problems in the world caused by men and women should be indirectly held accountable. Um, if men aren't held accountable for their own actions, women shouldn't be either. Um, they're just as susceptible to environmental pressures, being manipulated, coerced, or misguided, and in fact probably more likely due to having less power and agency than men um, due to different forms of um, social conditioning. I do think how someone is raised and what kind of childhood they have can play a big role in how they turn out and what outlooks they have, but that can also be a very individual thing with a lot of variation and outside influence. And people have different parenting styles. Um, you have some parents who may be very strict. Um, you may have some parents that are very hands-off. Um, they let their kids fend for themselves and figure out everything for themselves. Um, people have different beliefs um, about parenting and about their parents. Even in the same family, you can see kids sometimes turn out differently or go down a different path. Um, Maybe some parents treat their children differently, but I don't think that accounts for all of it. There are a lot of factors that can affect children outside of their parents, such as television, media, friends, other family, school, neighborhood, environment they grew up in, um, things that can be learned or picked up from television, media, internet, um, childhood, upbringing, cultural influence, life experiences, genetics, physical makeup, personality, race, gender, ethnicity, these factors and more make us who we are. You could pick up something from your friends or TV or the internet or your day-to-day -day life that causes you to change your mindset on something. You could seek out information, you could um, seek counsel, you could seek therapy. You know there are sayings like live and learn or find out things a hard way where you adjust your way of conducting yourself or looking at the world um, based on life experiences. I don't think anything is set in stone or can't be tweaked. <clears throat> there may be roadblocks in the way you think of things but yeah I think that mostly comes from age and lack of um, perspective and life experience. I mean, these are choices at the end of the day and your way of looking at things or how you're comfortable at looking at things. I mean, you have free will. You can come to all sorts of conclusions. For instance, you could have a person who believes it's um, the right thing or the best thing for them to follow what their parents taught them or how they were raised. Um, this could be due to cultural factors, religious factors, or attachments, certain attachments to their parents that they adopted. You could have someone else who maybe has a different personality who didn't develop the same sort of attachments to their parents, who didn't adopt these same factors uh, from their environment, and they can, you know, sort of develop their um, their own ideas or beliefs or go down a different path. Um, it may, they may have a certain personality that leads them to be exposed to different sorts of things or maybe they have, you know, a certain life experience where they learn or um, adopt different sorts of ideas or beliefs. I mean, uh, you can have all of this and everything in between and even in the same family. The Manosphere like to talk about divorce and the effects on men and families. Um, they talk like divorce, single motherhood, welfare is ideal for women. Um, 
and that family court is slanted in favor of women. They use anecdotes and sentimentalities to evoke some injustice, whether it's the case or not. I mean, to look at the family court definitively and say that men are under attack seems misleading. So their argument is women are filing for divorce because they get benefits out of the divorce. Um, and yes, that is true that women are most likely to file the divorce. That doesn't mean that they were the cause of the divorce. It could be that women are more likely to file paperwork or handle that sort of thing in the marriage, or maybe that men are more likely to push that sort of thing on to a to the woman. Um, or what's more likely is it could be that um, the woman is the injured party. For example, if someone is being abused or cheated on in a marriage, either one could file for the divorce. Um, but if the victim in these situations filed for the divorce, they wouldn't actually be the cause of the divorce. If someone is being treated poorly or unfairly in a marriage and they file for divorce, they aren't the cause of the divorce. I don't have anything against divorce. Of course, people should try to work it out um, if feasible, um, but yeah, sometimes there'll be a partner who's not willing to do what it takes uh, to make the marriage work. Or with like cheating in that scenario, your health is involved. Um, I mean like with STDs. I've known of a couple of people that got divorced, um, women. Um, my friend who I grew up with, um, she started having kids young. She had her first child when she was 19 and she married the father of her child um, and she had two more kids. So yeah, they went to a uh, divorce, um, maybe it was a year or so ago. So yeah, she had a difficult time because she never really worked. Um, so she was in a one bedroom apartment with three kids. Um, she was working as a waitress. Um, and then, you know, her ex, he had the house and the car. And, you know, uh, she was complaining like, oh, he's being a jerk. Like, why can't he let her loan the car? She has the three kids. So yeah, that was really a tough situation. I'm really not sure how that ended up. Um, and then the other situation was actually my supervisor at my job. Um, so yeah, we are doing our one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and her last name had changed. So yeah, she was just, you know, telling me uh, why her last name changed and what was going on. So yeah, she was telling me about her, uh, her husband who she was divorcing. So she got married pretty young too. She said she met him in high school um, and they had, uh, she also had three kids. Yeah, she was telling me, you know, she had uh, a job the whole time. She was working on her career, but he, you know, didn't keep a job. He didn't keep steady employment. Um, you know, and he would just hang around all the time. And, you know, I was asking, did, does he take care of the kids? And she was like, no. Um, so, yeah, she was pretty, you know, she sounded pretty upset. So, yeah, she was getting a divorce and she was complaining that she had to pay him half of what she saved from working. Um, so, yeah, she was not happy about that. Um, in the Manosphere, they say women are incentivized to get divorced. Um, they get the kids, house, car, uh, payout. Well, if a woman is a housewife and she foregoed a career um, and she ends up divorcing, um, I mean, say she has, you know, three kids, what is she supposed to do? You know, of course, the, the spouse, the court is going to look at her raising the children and her taking care of the house. They're going to look at that as valid contributions. And then the spouse is going to need to, you know, support that. She's probably going to, you know, she needs a place to stay for her kids. Um, she needs a car, you know, to take care of her kids. She's going to need money. So yeah, I don't think a woman in that situation is gonna be jumping up and down uh, for a divorce. Um, she'll wanna make sure her kids are you know, okay. She'll wanna make sure she has financial support and she'll need to figure out what she's gonna do in the future. 
I don't know all the ins and outs of the family court system, but yeah, I don't really see the situation that the manosphere speaks of unless either spouse is making significantly more income. Um, you know, otherwise, there's not really much to get out of a divorce um, if, you know, if there's similar incomes involved. So, yeah, it was set up that way, you know, with the spousal support for when uh, women, you know, stayed at home or maybe they made way less. Um, so, yeah, maybe um, that should be updated. Um, like in Sweden, uh, how it works is um, when a divorce happens, you know, they just leave the divorce with what they came into the marriage with. But yeah, it can work that way either way. Um, whether the man or the woman is breadwinner, if the woman is making a lot more, um, she's going to have to pay the spousal support. So, yeah, men are more likely to make more um, in a marriage, um, but, uh, yeah, it can go either way. And, yeah, women are more likely to get the children. I just think that comes down to the nature of how people look at offspring in general. Um, and, uh, you know, gender norms and that sort of thing. I don't think it comes down to some hateful bias towards men for the most part. So, yeah, a lot of this just seems like a form of uh, oppression and misogyny against women. Um, they seem to want to demoralize women and they don't view women as competent individuals. And, I mean, that's not a, that's just not a gender thing. They don't seem to think they have much value. They don't know how to make themselves valuable to women. Um, women have more rights and agency and they find that threatening to them. Um, women can get jobs, education, uh, welfare, divorce. Um, they have more options rather than a man. What it seems like to me is they're saying that um, women should be oppressed and subjugated uh, so they can benefit, so they can feel more valuable and have more power. Um, they want all of these, you know, all of the rights and privileges at the expense of women. Um, and they think that's a fair way to handle their problems. Um, I mean, to me, that sounds like a personal issue, uh, like a deep, deep sense of insecurity, to say the least. Um, I mean, maybe work on your own shortcomings and negative outlook instead of thinking women have to do with all of it. They don't like America or Western society or American women and yeah we have issues but I like the fact that I was born here in America and having the freedoms and livelihood it affords. Um, yeah that can come with issues and misuse but you know I'd rather have freedom they don't realize that people can love them for them and they go about it as if no one ever could.